I think most of us can come to an agreement that making money is ultimately the point of setting sail. Sure, you can enjoy the thrill of combat, but without the incentive of taking riches away from your opponents, the whole experience feels a bit shallow. F's in chat for the arena game mode, by the way. Needless to say that we're always looking for new ways to make more money more easily, but at some point it kind of starts to feel cheesy. Introducing Community Day. Rare decided to bestow upon us the gift of a fat multiplier to everything we sell during the celebration. And of course, that's stacked with your emissary bonus and as well as Gold Rush Hour. Countless pirates decided to set sail on this fateful day to make use of this unique opportunity and make as much money as possible. And that is exactly what I've done as well. So ladies and gentlemen, empty your pockets, bring as many chests as you can carry and get ready for another chapter of the Sea of Tales. Now I'm sure many of you had your own schedule set up on how you were gonna get the most buck for your bang on community day, but for me, the journey started with a visit to Lorena. Or is it Lorena? Here you can convert 50 doubloons into 10,000 gold pieces, but during gold rush hour on community day, those 10,000 were turned into 45,000 pieces. A few minutes and 1,900 doubloons later, I had turned 1.8 million gold into about 3.5 million. Not a bad hole to start off the day, but we were far from done, because I decided to go through with my plan in order of difficulty the next order of business was raising the merchant emissary flag and doing a commodity run. Six outposts later, I'd stocked up on more commodities than I could count and decided to turn them all in at Morrow's Peak. It was at this point in my journey that I really felt like I was cheating the system. Commodity runs are about as low risk as you can get and here I was making fat bank without even firing a shot for my flintlock, let alone my cannons. We had just turned an investment of 100,000 gold pieces into 600,000 gold revenue, meaning that this hour-long trip came with a net half million gold in profits. To think that we used to have to sink an entire server and then some to make anywhere near as much money as Reaper emissaries before I hit PL? Yeah, this was kinda crazy. But because the night was still young and gold rush hour still wasn't over, I decided to switch my cosmetics, raise the gold holder emissary flag and went on an ashen vault of the ancients voyage for the final push. Now up until now my day had been rather peaceful. Since this was a rare opportunity and everyone tried to make the most of it, nobody seemed to be interested in taking fights while the event was still running, but little did I know that this was gonna change the closer we came to an end of the festivities. I completed my voyage without a hitch and found myself at Fletcher's rest with a golden key in hand. At this point, it is worth mentioning that I've never actually emptied a Vault of the Ancients all on my own, and this was my first time doing that voyage in the Devil's War. My stupid idiot brain had not considered the logistics of doing alone what I usually had a bunch of crewmates help me with, so needless to say that I didn't succeed in emptying the entire vaults. But more problematic than that was that I had many pieces of loot to bring to my ship, and with only about 40 minutes left before gold rush hour was over, I was in a bit of a hurry. Which makes it ever the more inconvenient that a random sloop came out of nowhere having employed the help of a skelly ship to rain in on my parades. First I thought the skelly had turned against their master when they fired at them, but landing an anchor ball precisely when I'm in the broadside made these thoughts vanish in an instant. I had to get my own anchor up, lest the barrage is gonna turn my sloop into an inedible block of Swiss cheese. My ship's hull was filling with water at a breakneck pace, but I I had to fire back just to give them something to do. If I was to be boarded right now, my demise would be certain. But none of the damages I delivered stopped them from continuing to lay into me. They must have ran out of blunder bombs to stop me from repairing, but the fire was putting my life at risk all the same. One plank would have to suffice just to get me moving. At least I could use the water in my hull to combat the fire. But that situation truly was a test of my multitasking ability. When my ship finally set sail, I thought I was done with the worst of it, but the tenacity of that pirate was not to be underestimated. I heard my ship creaking as I fired off several chain shots who damaged their ship, but thankfully sloops are surprisingly resilient, so I knew that I had at least a few seconds to spare. Finally, I had made it out to the open sea, a moment to breathe and take care of the damages, but the assault was still not over? How could that guy already be moving after I took down his mast as well as his steering wheel? Of course, this skelly ship was here to finish the job. That guy must have used his community day profits to pay off the AI so that even if I managed to escape his grasp, I would be far from safe. The pressure was rising as that skelly ship got more and more aggressive. A ramming play ensured that all of my repairs were for naught while I struggled to turn away using a broken steering wheel. But things got so, so much worse. The damages that were piling up had been caused not just by one scaly ship, but a second one that appeared to ensure my demise. And it seemed like trouble was bound to come in pairs because two volcanoes decided to erupt amidst this battle. The only saving grace was that while the scaly ships were not on my side, the volcanoes very much appeared to be. It was time to make that guy's life a lot more difficult. I had to 
to ignore the Skellies for the time being to ensure that the sloop could not return to battle. The plan was successful and as his ship was making itself very familiar with the bottom of the ocean, the two Skelly vessels rallied to do the same to me. But you know what they say about animals that are pushed into a corner and much in that same way that pirate had nothing to lose and decided to go for one last Hail Mary on my ship to take me along with them. A respectable pirate with a respectable agenda, I can't fault him for trying to take me out after he was done with his own community day grind, and bringing the Skelly ship was either a funny coincidence or a stroke of genius. At last I came out victorious, but at what cost? I had a little over 20 minutes left to grab the vault's riches and head over to an outpost lest I be missing out on the gold rush hour bonus payout. It pained me to leave the Skelly ship's loot to sink, but a lot of it wasn't valuable to a gold holder anyway, and I knew that grabbing the rest of my loot was going to take some time. Even even then, more painful decisions had to be made. Should I decide to prioritize the loot, I'd be able to sell all of it with only the community day bonus. But instead, I decided to take the L and leave some of the chests on the island so that I can secure the extra payout from the gold rush hour. I am no mathematician, but in my head that made a lot of sense. I reached the final rank 5 on my emissary flag and headed out as fast as I could. With only 15 minutes left before the end of the gold rush, I had no time to waste. Galleon's Grave Outpost was my destination because another erupting volcano would spell doomed to my attempts at selling the loot. Time was of the essence, so I decided to ram my vessel into the island without remorse. I had never dropped loot off so quickly in my life, but alas, this was the only way to secure my coin. And secure it I did! With a fat bonus on every single item I sold, I came away from this whole adventure with a final additional payout of about 200,000 gold pieces. Which includes the gold I made from going back to Fletcher's Rest in order to sell those items as well. Yeah, if a commodity run can net you half a million gold with a fraction of the effort, that does end up feeling kind of sobering. At the end of community day, I walked away with about 2.4 million gold more than I started with, which for a solo endeavor is not too shabby. You might be wondering what I'm planning to buy with all that coin, but that my friends will have to wait for another day. But if you're still not fed up with hearing me talk, what about about checking out my last solo adventure in which I was leading a Reaper 5 Brigantine around the nose. Sure, I could have just sunk them, but I figured that the way I decided to handle that made that a way more interesting story. You can find the card on screen right now. But until then, thank you everybody so much for watching. Don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you want to see more, and definitely ring that bell icon to not miss out on my next upload. I hope you guys have a day filled with riches on the sea, and until next time, peace.